Greetings. Some of you will be working with text data sets for your class project, and I just want to give you a few hints on how to take your data set in its current form and turn it into something that you can load into Weka so that you can do the baseline experiment that's required for your project proposal. Of course, we'll be talking a lot more about text in the text unit, but that occurs after the deadline for turning in your project proposal. So for now, you should download and unpack LightSide. Um, you'll find the URL for the LightSide download in the syllabus for this class. And when you download the zip file and unzip it, you'll see the files and folders that you um, see in front of you here. I just want to point out, you can see uh, one of those folders is called data. And if you have a data file right now where your data is in CSV form, and you have a column for your class value and a column that is text um, and possibly other columns, you can take that CSV file and put it in this data directory and that will make it easy for you to be able to load your file in LightSide. Um, if you look down towards the bottom of the list, you'll see the LightSide executable and then a little bit further down you'll see LightSide Researcher's Manual. That's a PDF file that's a user's manual and I highly recommend that you go ahead and start reading that if you're going to be working with text. We'll be digging right into the details of that in the text unit which will be coming up soon uh, after the project proposal is due. Do keep in mind that uh, if you hit any snags along the way trying to get this done um, you can always reach out to the instructor, that's me, or the TAs for help. But um, don't wait until the night before the proposal is due before you start to look into this. Okay, when you run LightSide, this is the opening uh, panel, and uh, when we do the text unit, we will thoroughly examine all of the panels that make up the LightSide um, pipeline. But for now, it's mostly important to know how to use the Extract Features panel that you see. So in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see an icon that looks like a folder, and that's what you click to open up the data directory to load a file. So the file that we will be loading is called Gallup. You can go ahead and look at that file. Um, it's in the data directory. It's a CSV file. It's the file that was used to create the data set that um, you used in um, Weka file format form in assignment one. But um, here, it's in CSV file form, and that's what input files um, for Weka, I mean not for Weka, but for LightSide are like. So if you want to be able to use LightSide to turn your data into an ARFF file, that's the format that Weka needs, then you start out with CSV and you should put your file in the data directory. Okay, so similarly up in the upper left-hand corner of the panel, you can see some other things that you need to pay attention to. One is uh, where you see class, and there's a pull-down menu next to it that says vote. That's the class value attribute. And um, it was able to identify that in the file um, just because the file didn't have so many columns, and so it was obvious that that was the one. Uh, but in a file with more columns, it may not be able to correctly identify what you intend to have as the class value. So then you would use that pull-down menu to select the feature that you intend to predict. Then below that, where it says text fields, you want to have a check in the boxes next to the names of columns that have text in it. That's where you will be extracting um, the features from. If you open up that gallup.csv file, you'll see that the text is, is all um, a big chunk of text uh, in one column of the CSV file. But what we're going to do is break up that text into separate features. We're going to use what's called the basic feature extractor. If you look to the right, still towards the top of the panel, you'll see where it says basic features. Here, I'm pointing to it. And um, that's, uh, that's the code that's going to be able to take that text and break it into the individual features. And I'm just not going to get into a lot of details about what it's actually doing yet, because we're going to talk about that in the text unit. But basically what it's doing is for every word that occurs in any of those texts, it's creating a binary feature that for every instance is true if the text has that word in it, 
that corresponds to that feature and false otherwise. And so then if you have one of these features per word, the ones that correspond to words that occurred at least once in the corresponding text will have true as their value and the others will have false. Now, if you want to do that extraction, you have to click on the Extract button, and then you can see the features, and they occur, um, and they're listed in the Features in Table list that's in the bottom right-hand uh, corner. Now, if you look at that list, you can see, first of all, that punctuation is treated as though each one is a separate word, and then you'll see a list of words. So you can see that there's one feature per word, and like I said, they're binary features. So now what you want to do is take this feature table that it created. And what is a feature table? It's the, um, it's the table that we've been looking at uh, that is, um, for example, the Play Tennis data set where we've got a row per instance and columns for each feature. Now we have one where each row is uh, an entry in this Gallup poll and the columns are the features. And here we see listed all the text features. Those are the features that it just extracted. And now what we want to do is save this in Weka file format. So I have circled in the bottom left-hand corner the floppy disk icon. If you click on that, then, uh, then you, there's a pull-down menu where you get to pick the type of the output file. In this case, it would be ARFF because that's the Weka format. And then you're going to name the file and save your feature table to the saved directory. Saved directory is another one of the folders that are in, in that top level um, uh, directory created when you unzip the file. And that's it. It's as simple as that. So hopefully you'll have no trouble. And once you have an ARFF file, then you can load that into Weka and use it just like any other Weka data file.